Hello everyone, I am Vikram Aditya and uh, welcome to Jades of Tech and Jades of Tech. And in this session, we are going to discuss about the SAP ABAP Consultant Roles and Responsibilities in Migration Project. So we all, uh, you know, we all are aware of migration projects and uh, most of us have already worked in migration projects. But this session is is focused on those who want to know about more about the migration project and uh, ABAP, uh, ABAPA's roles and responsibilities in it. So what is the role of an ABAP, uh, ABAP developer in migration project from ECC to HANA is what we are focusing on. So before starting the conversion process, the basis consultants or we also call them as administration consultant, SAP administration consultants has to find out if the system can be converted to S4 HANA. There are dependencies which might make the current uh, system incompatible to S4 HANA and uh, stop the conversion. So we have to first focus on and decide whether the conversion is possible or not because uh, the compatibility must be there. Now, what is the role of an ABAP developer in migration project? For example, if the, let's say the client might be using some add-on products which are not yet supported in S4 HANA system. So maybe the current system cannot be directly upgraded to S4 HANA and you might need to upgrade the current system to a minimum support package before you can actually start the conversion. This is what we have. So for, 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 for information, the system needs to be a Unicode system as a prerequisite for conversion of S4 HANA. Once the basis, the SAP basis consultants or the as we, as we already know, SAP admin consultants, declares that the system can be converted and give their green signal, the actual process of conversion can be commenced. Now the entire task of conversion of S4 HANA can be broadly categorized into three categories, three segments. One is the pre-conversion activities, system conversion, and then we have the post-conversion activities. So these are the three major segments. Now the pre-conversion activities, the basis consultants should create a sandbox system where we should perform the dry run. The sandbox should be the copy of production system where realistic tests can be executed. And basis consultants needs to apply necessary notes, the SAP notes I'm talking about, uh, wherein like they can install uh, uh, SAP notes. So for, uh, as we all know, to access the SAP notes, we should have the S user ID, right? So to enable the functional consultants, do the consistency check. Functional consultants do the consistency check and rectify the errors found. The ABAPers change the custom code and make it compatible to HANA system. Now, the second step would be the system conversion, wherein once all the errors are rectified and the custom codes are changed, then, the, then starts the actual process of system conversion. The SAP basis consultants start the conversion with the help of SAP provided tools. Those are like uh, SUM. Uh, software update manager with DMO, the database uh, migration operations. These tools will help the basis consultants to convert the ECC system to HANA system and migrate the data from the legacy database to HANA database. Now the post conversion activities, once the conversion is done, functional consultants have to check the impact of the conversion and they might need to perform some additional activities. Roles started, roles started based on ABO activities we have. The ABO discussion gives a brief outline of S4 HANA conversion process. Now let's discuss the custom code management because that's very important for a, a BAPR. So custom code management can be segregated into two distinct uh, steps. Decommissioning the unused custom code and making the custom code ready for HANA system. So I repeat these two points. It's very important for us as an ABAPR. Decommissioning the unused custom code and making the custom code ready for SAP system. Now, now when we talk about the decommissioning the unused ABAP custom code, as SAP recommends, we should decommission the unused custom codes, not the other way around. So uh, it's not that we have to first go for the used one. So we should not try to make change to code to make it uh, HANA ready first. So first thing that we have to do is decommission the unused custom code. Then comes the step of, uh, you know, modifying the code according to the HANA. The reason being uh, simple, so that, that will eventually help us and we don't have to work on objects which are not used anymore. 
So SAP has been suggesting a few tools for some time now to identify the custom codes that are not in use anymore. So the usage pr procedure log or the UPL we call it as and SQL monitor that's SQLM and then ABAP call monitor that's SCMON are to name a few of it. So there are a lot of SAP mentors writing blogs about these tools and uh, you'll get uh, plenty of resources over the internet which describes the way we use this uh, tools but anyways like if you are interested i can also make a exclusive video for this however you don't have to use all these tools after going through this pile of uh, information that we have around um scmon is the latest t code and uh, use of this t code is uh, sufficient to identify the custom codes which are being used and which are not so please remember this custom code scmon Okay, this is the transaction code that you need to remember. You can explore this transaction code to know more about it. And the purpose of ABAP call monitor is to monitor the execution and usage of custom ABAP code. For example, like the programs, function modules, method calls, etc. in the productive system. The advantage of SCMON compared to the UPL in SAP Solution Manager is that using this tool, we not only collect the usage data, uh, how frequently a specific ABAP object is called, but also the information about the calling business process. Therefore, as a result of monitoring, we get a list of uh, business transactions along with all ABAP objects that have been called within these business transactions, including the number of calls, exact, etc. Now, it all sounds easy, but there are, there are complexities to attach to it. Let's see. So what's the problem? Now, the problem is we should start using this T code even before we have planned to move to S4HANA. So, um, you know, uh, you know it, it looks uh, a bit weird, but yes, it does. So, what approach we should we could uh, take to decommission the unused custom code is? So, our suggestion is that it should be altogether a separate project. We should not take it up along with the S4HANA conversion project. So, we should first use the SCM point transaction as long as we think it is suitable for our client uh, and we need to remember that it should also capture those objects which are used once in a while for example month end weekend quarter quarter end all things once that is done we can proceed proceed with the decommissioning of the custom code with a tool called CCLM the custom code lifecycle management now, making the custom code ready for SAP HANA system, what does the what does that mean? Why is this necessary to, at all? So, although SAP has come up with new tables in order to reduce data footprint and to have a single source of truth, it still supports all the old tables. Either the old tables are still getting populated, or there is some view with the same name. So, for example, like except a KONV table, which is replaced by a new table called PRCD elements. So, it's a, it should support all the custom codes. Well, it does support the old custom codes, except the following few cases. Like, uh, for example, the custom codes, which relies on database specific features are using native SQL or hints in not supported in SAP HANA. So, default sorting is not guaranteed in SQL HANA. So we need to make a few changes. Now the question is like, do we need to make these changes in order to convert the old SAP business suit to HANA? The answer is yes. Before we start the actual process of conversion, we need to make changes wherever any, any of the above two cases are found. This is a part of pre-conversion activities and it is mandatory. So is there any way to identify the custom codes which must be changed? The answer is yes again and SAP has come up with a brilliant solution for the custom code check. The tool for HANA checks is ABAP test cockpit ATC with remote code analysis. So you set up only one ATC central system uh, SAP basis more than 7.5 for all static checks of your custom uh, ABAP code in your system landscape which needs to be migrated to SPOHAN. So we have this central check system, which uh, which, will, which is available for SAP basis uh, version more than 7.51. So 
So we have got this ATC, the SAP ABAP test cockpit, wherein like we do the uh, we do the process of uh, getting the data in from uh, you know customer code, uh, whatever customer code that we have. We normally check it and uh, through the RFC, we get it into the ATC and we check that. So install a standalone SAP NetWeaver system with the components shown in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the image that we are going to, uh, I'm going to display now. So this new, slit, new NetWeaver system can be connected to any system in the landscape. So this is what we have here. And then we have got this install software. So you can check, you can, you can probably check the installed uh, component versions and also the installed uh, version. So now if in, in our example here, which we see, we have SAP basis release 7.52. So it's, it's probably uh, good for, you know, going ahead with the migration. Now here we have the install products. We can check the install products here and we've got the ABAP version as 7.4. That is also good. So when you have to set up the ADC, ABAP test cockpit, applying the recommended nodes in the NetViewer system. So we need to download the system version of the simplification database content from SAP service marketplace. So for this SAP service marketplace as well, as we all know, we have to have a login ID, login credentials. Install the simplification database content on the central ATC check system. So create an RFC connection in the source system in your landscape to this uh, NetWeaver system. Push the custom code, preferably push all y, y and uh, Z packages from the D development uh, system to the NetWeaver system using the RFC. Execute S4 HANA IAN or S4 HANA checks. Run the ABAP test cockpit within the with the variant functional DB. Analyze the ABAP test cockpit result list and make necessary changes in the development system. So after the migration of HANA, the S4 HANA sandbox, there is only one thing left for an ABAP. All the select queries to KONV table are to be changed to PRCD elements table. So however, you can still keep on using the KONV structure for data declarations. Only this, uh, I'm focusing only on the select statement. Now, additionally, you can check the custom code using the variant performance underscore DB. However, we can recommend that the performance optimization should be taken up separately after migrating to HANA. This is when we suggest using SCMON prick decode. Once the migration is complete, activate SCMON in the production system, the S4 HANA sandbox, and identify the unused custom codes. So once the unused custom codes are de detected, decommission the same with help of the custom code lifecycle management. After decommissioning the unused custom codes, you can start with the custom code check with the variant performance underscore DB and resolve the errors form. So however, you can do performance tuning if it is required for any particular object. So that's it for this session and I'm going to soon come back with more details about the migration project and you know ABAP rules and responsibilities and various types of projects. And we have got more than 150 modules on which I would like to talk about because they are all very interesting and happening in the throughout the world in the market. So SAP is a vast ocean as we all know and I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible to you all. Suggestions are always welcome from you all. And I'd request you to all subscribe to our channel and share these videos with your friends so that it will help them as well. And all the suggestions that I you you probably give it in the in the in the comments. I make sure I read them and uh, try to improve my better videos in a better way. So any constructive uh, uh, con constructive uh, suggestions which can help my our uh, sessions would, would always be welcome. But just in case, if you are looking for SAP trainings or any other software trainings, uh, you please contact on uh, the mail ID which is mentioned in the description. Thank you. Have a great day.